part-time narcissist. Is there such a thing as a part-time narcissist? No, I don't mean the individual is a narcissist some of the time and then the rest of the time decides that he is going to be an amateur footballer or that he does the washing up down at the local restaurant. But rather, I mention the phenomenon of the concept of a part-time narcissist because actually many victims of our kind fall into the trap of believing that there is such a thing. When we devalue you, this occurs either as a sustained devaluation, where you are in the position of the intimate partner primary source, the spouse, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the cohab, the long-term partner of the narcissist, or corrective devaluations, in a way, repeated wrist slaps of varying degrees issued by the narcissist towards tertiary and secondary sources, both intimate and non-intimate. Those are the forms of devaluation. And as you know from my work and your own experiences, the nature of those devaluations varies extensively. Some may be just as rudimentary as getting punched in the face. In other incidents, incidences, it's being treated to a word salad, a circular conversation. It might be the case that you are triangulated with an object, that the narcissist uses their phone as a headquarters, head buried in it as you wonder what's going on. It might be that you receive unfavourable comparisons between you and somebody else, whereby you're compared as against that colleague at work or the neighbour or the friend. It might be that you're given a silent treatment. It might be that you're belittled, invalidated, outright insulted and called names. It might be that you experience sexual withdrawal. It might be that there's a rejection of intimacy, the failure to support you where it wants to take place. There are all manner, hundreds of different types of devaluation that can occur. And of course, many people, when they experience those devaluations, ultimately recognise that that is the modus operandi of a narcissist, that they are being manipulated by those behaviours so that they experience an unhappy outcome, whether it's physical injury, emotional distress, psychological problems, financial hardship and so forth, there is an outcome which is detrimental to them. And they recognise, yes, that's the narcissist at work, engaging in all of those unpleasant behaviours. But what they do, mistakenly, is believe that the narcissist, when being pleasant and supportive and friendly and kind and loving and caring and all of those other things, all of those other positive and wonderful and edifying and supportive and exhilarating moments, that that isn't the narcissist being a narcissist, that somehow we switch off our narcissism, either consciously or it's done unconsciously on our behalf, that when we tell you that we love you, we actually do love you, that when we say we're going to look after you for the rest of our lives, that we are going to actually do that. And it was an entirely genuine sentiment that it was issued at that point. People mistakenly believe that the narcissist it somehow operates as a part-time narcissist. We do not. There is no such thing as a part-time narcissist. There are, of course, people who aren't actually narcissists who will engage in behaviours analogous to that of our behaviours, but they do not cross the threshold to be found to be a narcissist. And that might be for a narcissistic individual, possibly even a normal, and even where there is a reactive situation from an empathic individual. In those three categorizations of people, invariably their response is a consequence of a diminution of their emotional empathy caused by an external stressor, which means that their narcissistic traits come to the fore and in effect, for want of a better description, they lash out. Everybody on this planet is capable of doing unpleasant things to another person. The difference is, we do it in pursuit of the prime aims. It's habitual and repeated. It's part of how we're programmed, how we're made. All non-narcissists are not programmed in that method. People therefore think that somebody, when they're not being unpleasant to is a narcissist, that's them not being the narcissist any longer, that the narcissism isn't operating, that somehow it's suspended, it's on hold, it's been switched off. It isn't the case. 
I've made mention in a different explanation of this elsewhere that it's important that you understand that there is no such thing as a part-time narcissist. That when we're being kind to you, it's an artifice. We don't really care about you. Our narcissism, either consciously or unconsciously, causes us to give the appearance of caring, usually through words and sometimes through actions as well, in order to control you, to draw fuel from you, possibly also to gain character traits and also residual benefits. Our narcissism, in effect, encourages us to display a caring attitude in order to get to the prime aims. We cannot be red of tooth and claw all of the time. If we were, we wouldn't have any victims. For instance, if I went into a bar and saw an attractive lady and said, Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, I'm a narcissistic psychopath, how do you fancy being my girlfriend and being abused? She would doubtless scream, throw her dirty martini in my face and run away from me. I've lost control of her. And therefore, as an aware narcissist, I wouldn't approach it in that method. I'd be well-dressed, looking ruggedly handsome as always, smelling great. I'd be charming, magnetic, fun, interesting, polite, courteous and generous. So I'd draw her in, that I'd make her belong to me, that I would collect her and add her to the asylum of the grotesque. I, of course, do so consciously, knowing that that's the most effective way of doing so. And a lesser and mid-range narcissist would act in a similar, although perhaps less effective, method unconsciously. The lesser, in effect, the narcissism keeps the dark side under wraps, giving the sort of bronze period behaviour as I've explained in the bronze period video. The mid-ranger, the veneer and the facade are in operation. The narcissism guides the behaviour to ensure that there isn't the tongue lashing, the acidic responses, the huffing, the silent treatments and so forth. Sometimes it can occur in seduction and the seduction breaks off, usually with a lesser, because their ability to control their ignited fury is far less evolved and they basically fuck it up at an early juncture. Mid-rangers, having a greater level of control, unconscious control over their ignited fury, are far less likely to mess it up during seduction, and they are able to appear as a credible, caring, empathic person, although, of course, they're a narcissist and therefore they are not. Accordingly, in order to draw in our victims, we must present this position of at least being okay, and more usually, of being kind and caring and a good listener, of being honest and decent, having a moral compass, etc. All generated where mid-range, greater and ultra, through cognitive empathy, and with the lessers, a dampening down of the bad behaviours so that they are kept under control, so that there is nothing too unpleasant, so that the victim is unwittingly drawn in. When we're doing all of this, our narcissism isn't suspended. It is in full effect, but it is just acting in a manner whereby it operates in a benign fashion. We're still manipulating you. We're still seeking to control you, because that need for control is almost constant. It is only absent when we are asleep or unconscious. We are looking to draw fuel from you. We may also be looking for character traits and residual benefits. So our narcissism is still working, but all it is doing is that it is operating in a benign fashion. When we are manipulating you in a benign fashion, our narcissism hasn't been suspended. It's still operating. When we are interacting with another human being, directly or indirectly, it is a form of manipulation. Some are benign, some are malign, but either way the manipulation is taking place. A narcissist that sat in a room on his own watching television isn't manipulating anybody. Nobody is coming up on his radar, therefore the narcissism doesn't need to control. He may well be already well fueled from the day's activities, and although his fuel level is slowly dropping, it isn't going to cause him any problems. There's no need to acquire character traits or residual benefits, and therefore a narcissist is perfectly capable of sitting in a room on his own and watching a television programme, purely to watch the television programme. However, an actress may appear who reminds him of his ex. At that point, the narcissism fires into action and asks, is this person under control? If they're not, and invariably that's the case, it will then go through the three assertions of control, direct, should a hoover take place, indirect, should they be smeared or triangulated, or through withdrawal, staying in withdrawal, and that control will be obtained. 
If, of course, fuel levels were very low, even if that individual was known to be under control, the narcissism would, like, would likely compel the narcissist to hoover in order to try and draw that fuel. But the narcissism remains. Even when that narcissist is sat watching a television programme on his own, well fueled, not needing to control anybody, the narcissism is still there. It just isn't doing anything at that point because there is no other human being that the narcissist is interacting with. But as soon as a thought arises about somebody else, that is an interaction and the narcissism cranks into action. If there is a reminder of somebody else on that television programme, the narcissism cranks into action. If a text message comes in from somebody, they come up on the radar, the narcissism cranks into action. Evaluating, does the message show that that person is under control? If they are, do we need anything more from them? If not, they're ignored. There's no response provided because we have no emotional empathy that it takes that we should reply to you and be courteous and friendly and polite. If your text message denotes that you're not under control, the narcissism then determines should we assert control directly, indirectly or by staying in a position of withdrawal. Might it be that we have to go back to you to gain some fuel from you, even though you are under control and therefore the hoover occurs. The narcissism is always there, operating in the background, evaluating, watching, assessing the level of control and the need for fuel character traits and residual benefits. Understand, our narcissism is always operating, save when we are unconscious, and that an individual, when they are being decent to you and kind and pleasant and caring and all of those other things, it isn't that they've stopped being a narcissist, they still are. And you would do well to remember that, because as I've explained elsewhere, you invariably fall into the trap of thinking, this person evidently loved and cared for me and was kind. How did it go so wrong? Why did they start abusing me? The fact is, you're approaching it the wrong way around. What you should be telling yourself is, the fact that this person abused me demonstrates that, that they could not have loved me. Because people who exhibit genuine emotional empathy, love being a manifestation of that, don't abuse other people on an habitual and repeated basis. It just doesn't happen. And therefore, anybody that does abuse you in that manner cannot have loved you. You might have thought that they did because you were given the impression of that. And you were given that impression, why? Because we needed to get you under control through benign means. We needed to draw fuel from you. We needed to acquire those character traits and residual benefits. And our narcissism dictated the most effective way, as it invariably is with nearly everybody when we first meet them, is to treat you in a benign method to achieve those prime aims. The narcissism is nearly always there operating. There is no such thing as a part-time narcissist. I am H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.